In this part of the training model, we focus on the expression of the soil water content. So we have a soil sample in which there is a certain amount of water. Let's assume that it is possible to decompose the soil sample by compacting it, all the solid particles, in one solid block. Above, the water, which was in the soil pores, will settle. Now, the amount of water in the soil sample can be expressed on a mass basis, how much kilograms of water we have, on a volume basis, how many liters or cubic meters we have, or as an equivalent depth. It is the thickness of the water layer which has settled above the solid mass. When we are going to express the soil water content on a mass basis, we look at the mass of the soil water and we express it with reference to the total dry mass of the sample. So the mass water content, theta m, is the mass of the soil water over the mass of the dry soil. The units are kilograms of water per kilograms of dry soil. Often it is expressed as a percentage, so if we multiply it with 100, we obtain mass percentage. To determine the mass water content, we go to the field and take a soil sample. We bring it to the lab and we measure its weight. It is the mass of the solid and the water. Then we put it in a ventilated oven during 24 hours at 107 degrees. All the water has evaporated and we weigh it again, so the weight will be only the weight of the dry mass. To calculate the mass water content, we divide the mass of the soil water by the mass of the dry soil. Let us run an example for a clay loam soil. So we go to the field and take a soil sample and the mass of the solids and the water is equal to 250 grams. We bring it to the lab and we dry it. We weigh it again and the mass, we have now only mass of solids, is reduced to 200 grams. Consequently, the mass water content is equal to the mass of water, which is 250 minus 250 grams divided by 200 gram dry mass. It gives me 0.25 kilograms of water per kilograms dry soil or 25 mass percentage. So if we express the soil water content on a volume basis, we express the volume of the soil water with reference of the volume of the soil sample from which the water is extracted. So volumetric water content theta is the volume of the soil water over the bulk volume of the soil. It is expressed as cubic meters of water per cubic meter of soil. If we multiply it with 100, we express it as a volume percentage. In the field, we took a soil sample and we determined the mass water content. Now the volumetric water content is given by multiplying the mass water content with the ratio of the bulk density to the density of water. The bulk density of my clay loam is 1.3 grams per cubic centimeter. To determine the volumetric water content, I take the ratio of the bulk density to the density of water, which is 1, and multiply it with the previous 
ketamine mass water content, which was 0.25. The volumetric water content is 0.33 cubic meters of water per cubic meter per sol, or if I express it as a volume percentage, 33 volume percentage. To express the sol water content as an equivalent depth of liquid water, the thickness of the water layer is expressed as a fraction of the thickness of the sol layer from which the water was extracted. So equivalent depth of water is the ratio of the depth of the water to the depth of the bulk volume sol. It is expressed in meters per water per meter of sol. Often the depth of the water is expressed in millimeters. So if we multiply it with 1000, we obtain millimeters of water per meter of sol. In the field, we have obtained a sol sample for which we have determined the mass water content. By multiplying it with the bulk density, we obtain the volumetric water content theta. The equivalent depth is the ratio of the thickness of the water layer, small d, over the thickness of the sol layer, capital D. If we multiply the denominator and the denominator with A, then that ratio is the same as the sol water content expressed on a volumetric basis. So, equivalent depth is 1000 times theta, and it is expressed as millimeters of water per meter of sol depth. To express the sol water content as an equivalent depth, we multiply the volumetric water content, which was 0.33, with 1000 and get 330 millimeters of water per meter of sol depth. Let us now compute the sol water content in the root zone. We go to the field and we take a representative sol sample, determines the mass water content, multiply it with the bulk density to obtain the volumetric water content, and finally express it as an equivalent depth. It is millimeters of water per meter of sol depth. However, we have a rooting depth which is only z meters. Consequently, the water content in the root zone is the equivalent depth, 1000 times theta, times the rooting depth. And the units are now millimeters of water. We can also represent the root zone as a reservoir in which there is a certain amount of water. The volumetric water content in the root zone is theta. The water content in the reservoir is 1000 times theta times z. This gives me the stored sol water in the root zone. Let's assume that we have a rooting depth of 0.7 meters. Then the water content in my root zone will be 1000 times 0.33 times 0.7. It is 231 millimeters of water.